With everything getting canceled, I need to start thinking about how I can make myself better. What are some of my weaknesses? Ah well, I'll think about it later. Jeez, how long have you been standing there? Hey man, did you hear everything got canceled this season? What are you going to do to get faster? I was just thinking of a couple of ways that I could probably try and get- <laughs> Actually, I don't really care. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to get free speed. Oh yeah, that's not rude or anything. I'm going to mainline beat root juice and do more steady state. That sounds great, actually. How much more were you thinking you're going to do? Are you going to do it based off of heart rate? Have you done a lactate watt step test? Are you going to do any cross training with biking or running? I'm just going to do more. Okay. Are you going to do like an extra 40 minutes per week? More. Like 80 more minutes per week? More. You couldn't be adding 160 per week. I'm going to do more than more steady state. Okay. This clearly is not going anywhere. More steady state. Attention. What is going on, rowing community? My name is Justin Best. Thank you very much for watching the video today. The world has changed very drastically over the past few months due to a little virus called SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19 otherwise known as coronavirus. Essentially all races in the United States have been canceled. Many races abroad have been either canceled completely or postponed to a later date. With that being said, I saw this as an opportunity to get better, not only as a rower, but as an athlete as a whole. Today, I'm gonna to be going over the six things that I have been doing personally to try and make myself better. Number one, improving my aerobic fitness. This does not just mean doing more steady state. Increasing aerobic volume is only a part of the bigger picture. These are screenshots of what a typical week looks like in training in these past few months. The upper screen is when I didn't have access to a boat on the water. The lower screen, of course, is when I had access to a boat. I typically am going for between 800 and 900 minutes of cardiovascular activity per week. That's with rest included, just because the heart rate watch that I go off of kind of uses it to calculate perceived load and overall exertion. I personally am really weak when it comes to lactate threshold work, specifically for an extended period of time, above 171 heart rate for me. Doing extensive volume in UT1 and UT2 training zones definitely helps with this, but also doing work in those thresholds and just getting used to it helps too. So in these past few months, I've been trying to spend 80 to 100 minutes inside that lactate threshold spread across two days per week. There are a ton of different variations of workouts, four by 10 minutes, 30 minute, 20 minute, 10 minute, three by 6K, three by 4K, varying rates. So you can go from 22 to 24 to 30, uh, really whatever it is to get your heart rate up into those elevated zones where you're consistently producing lactate. As far as UT2 and UT1 cardio go, I prefer to do 70% at least of my cardio per week, either rowing inside of a boat or on a rowing machine, whether that's a Concept2 or an RP3. The other 30%, I will mix in some cross training with running or cycling, but I definitely prefer to have that 70-30 split in the minutes that I am doing the UT2, UT1. That's just a personal preference of mine. I know there are plenty of other successful rowers that do and almost exclusively cycling or they do a lot of running. That's just my personal preference. The second thing that I've been working on throughout these past few months is overall strength. So I'll just do a little voiceover really quick. This is just a typical lifting workout that I might do. I will be the first to say it. I am very weak when it comes to the gym. <laughs> I didn't lift very much in high school. I lifted on and off in, throughout college. I wanted to focus on heavy compound lifts and then doing accessory work to assist with these heavy compound lifts. I'll do front squats and bent over rows. I will lift three times a week usually. Typically I'll start the lift with a heavy compound, whether that's back squat, deadlifts. I'll also do Olympic lifts if I have access to the proper equipment and I will go into some more accessory stuff. I like to do supersets of exercises and then I finish up each lift with round of different core. I really found that lifting helps with injury prevention and 
maintenance. I'm not going for super heavy one rep maxes. I usually will do hypertrophy type. The lowest rep range I'll go for is usually about four. I really focus on trying to keep good technique. In a lot of the heavier lifts, I focus on keeping my core under control. In the accessory lifts, I try to focus on mind-muscle connection and complete range of motion. I've been really happy with my progress. Just a few months ago, my max back squat was 255. And as you can see in the video, I repped that for four. I definitely feel more powerful in the boat and on an erg. I also really enjoy lifting because it kind of shakes things up from just the monotonous cardio that I usually do. And that is how I've been improving my strength over these past few months. A third thing that I've been working on, it, which a lot of rowers throughout the United States and the world will have to be doing is single sculling. So I'm just gonna preface this. I have some sculling experience. I sculled for a season in my senior year of high school. And then earlier this fall, actually before the pandemic broke out, I was sculling pretty consistently at Vesper Boat Club. There are a million things that I need to work on and improve with my sculling, but just for the sake of conciseness, just gonna be going over three things that I have been working on personally while it, when it comes to single sculling. First thing is sequencing out of bow. Especially when I get tired, I start to rock the body over and move the arms at the same time. What I've been trying to do in the single, it is very, very important for the stability of the boat to move the hands away before the body rocks over. The second thing that I've been trying to work on is stability with the body itself trying to not set the boat using the wobbling knees, but trying to keep my center of gravity low in the boat, not disturb it. Also keeping weight off my hands and only slightly adjusting my set with my hands. The third thing that I'm trying to work on in the single is the grip that I use to hold my skulls. I over grip and make the feathering and squaring motion by rotating my wrist instead of rolling the skulls in my fingers. This makes me use my forearms a lot more than I need to, and then I get unnecessarily tired. These were just three of the many things that I have been working on over the past few months in the single skull, in addition to just overall comfort in the boot class. The fourth thing that I've been working on these past few months is nutrition, or how I've been fueling my body. I'll just run through quickly what a day of eating might look like for me. I start with half a cup of oatmeal with blueberries, a little bit of honey and some cinnamon, five eggs with broccoli and a little bit of cheese. A nice glass of orange juice. My goal these past few months has been to eat high quality foods and avoid grabbing processed packaged goods. A typical lunch might be two salmon steaks, a full cup of cooked rice, some grilled Romanescu and cucumbers, an iced espresso with oat milk. Dinner right here is shredded chicken on lettuce wraps with a mango salsa on top. I also wanted to increase the amount of fibrous greens that I was eating with each meal. So broccoli, asparagus, spinach. I also tried to focus on eating more variety of fruits. So incorporating berries, bananas, apples, oranges, mangoes, all sorts of different fruits, trying to eat a rainbow. I'm not tracking any calories or macros. I kind of eat based off of feel. I eat when I'm hungry and I stop eating when I'm full. I'm not trying to gain weight or lose weight at this point. My focus on these past few months has really just been more so the quality of the food. I've also decided to declare total war on cereal. Actually, I didn't declare total war on cereal, but I was eating a lot of cereal. It was really actually a problem. I would buy a family-sized box of Lucky Charms and finish it within 24 hours of purchasing it. That's how bad it got. So I just wanted to overall decrease the amount of cereal that I was eating. I wanted to get my energy from better quality foods. The fifth thing I've been working on is sleep. I've been practicing a few different techniques to help me improve how I am getting my rest. So sleep isn't that in depth. It's just more so being consistent, uh, both with going to bed on time and then also waking up at the same time. And I try to stick to a six days a week. I am very, very consistent with when I go to sleep and when I wake up. And then one day a week, usually on my rest days, I'll kind of deviate from that. Getting effective naps is also a big part of sleep for me personally. It's a very, very helpful recovery tool, but I tend to abuse them. And what ends up happening is I'll sleep way too long, go very, very deep into cycles of sleep. What I end up doing is waking up groggier than I fell asleep. I try to set to 35 minutes to 45 minutes the maximum. And the sixth 
And last thing that I've been working on is recovery work and warming up. So I'll just run through my active warm up that I do for each session, whether that's rowing on the water, rowing on an erg, lifting. I roll out, get my back, uh, and then I roll out a lot on my hamstrings and my legs. And then I also focus on rolling out my hips, trying to get really in between the glutes and the hip flexors. Um, and I find that this just mobilizes blood better. It loosens me up more. Um, and I really try and get all of my lower body as well as my upper body. I hit 10 to 12 reps with each uh, position. I roll out my IT band and, because that really gets tight sometimes uh, throughout, the, throughout the day. So rolling out the IT band before getting started uh, always helps. And then I will roll out my lat, uh, starting with the upper and then trying to work lower as I go. Then I'll go in to do what I call Spider-Mans. Um, it's, it's just a basic rock into the hip and uh, rotate. And I'll do the rotation to the sky and then I will do a standing rotation um, off to the side. There are tons of studies that show effective dynamic warm-ups provide better overall performance. I think that it just helps me with injury maintenance. Um, I do kind of figure fours and rotate lower the lower back. These are things called dead bugs. I try to engage the core, get the upper and lower abs working. I'm trying to open up the hips again um, by putting pressure on the inner thighs and just stretching out the lats right here. So then I'll go into some leg swings, both sides. I really try and focus on squeezing the hip abductors and adductors, just again, getting blood flow and warming up. I'll do arm circles, uh, starting small and going big. And then I start with uh, some squats that open up the thoracic spine. So I'll run through this routine in the evenings after dinner, probably four to five times per week. I kind of just put on a TV show or something and run through these stretches and hold for 30 seconds. This is obviously very sped up. This is another variation of the figure four stretch, just trying to get the hamstrings, glutes, and hips loose. And obviously the serpentine, trying to get the low back loose. Using the band to stretch my quads on both sides. This exercise just opens up the hips more. This is a stretch for the lat. This is a stretch for the delts. This is a stretch for the pecs. After I've done a full stretch, I'll use the mas massage Theragun uh, on the bigger muscles and going up and down the quads, the IT bands, trying to get the hamstrings. Um, do it both sides and I, I'll run up and down just trying to get blood mobilization and get out any patches of lactate buildup and then I'll use the Theragun on my hips, use the Theragun on my uh, pecs and then my lats. I would highly recommend getting a Theragun and a resistance band. And those are the six things that I have been working on these past few months. I firmly believe that being an athlete doesn't just stop at practice or what you're doing during a competition. It really is what you need to do outside of all of that. So let me know in the comments what you guys have been up to to make yourself better these past few months during the pandemic. If you liked what you saw during this video, please feel free to subscribe and leave a like. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.